This is even more good news for Joe Biden, who won South Carolina on Saturday, securing nearly half of all votes. The city of Evanston has a website that allows you to see what your water service line is made of. We use the website to find out that every house on this street has a water service line that's made of lead. Lake Michigan is consistently the deadliest of the Great Lakes. This year, at least 38 people have drowned in these waters. If we see a President Biden and a Republican controlled Senate, what can Democrats do realistically to um, make amendments to healthcare legislation and the ACA? Tonight, I'm here at Nashua Community College where supporters of Mayor Pete Buttigieg piled into the gym to watch results roll in. Providers will often ask you for a form of ID. Undocumented people are eligible for the vaccine, but oftentimes it's the question of proof of identity that's leaving some to want to stay home. If this call goes through, Erotic Kashgari might finally know what happened to her family on the other side of the world. But the ringing ends in silence, just like Kashgari's other phone calls to this number since the end of 2016. And that's what happens every time. Generally, it'll just ring. Kashgari is Uyghur American. Her family is from an area in Western China commonly known as Xinjiang, U.S. officials have said the Chinese government is detaining over one million Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities in order to erase their religious and ethnic identity. The Chinese embassy declined multiple requests for an interview. But in an email, a spokesperson referenced a previous press conference with Chinese officials where an official claimed that allegedly missing people whose information had circulated on media platforms are living normal and stable lives. But many Uyghur Americans anxiously await any word from their relatives in China who have disappeared. My immediate family is here, my parents, my brothers, um, but my grandma, my aunts and my uncles are all back there. When you try to get in contact with them, what happens? All we hear is a ringing and nothing, nothing happens. Other phone numbers are disconnected. The number you have dialed is not in service. Uyghurs say merely speaking their native language can risk trouble with government authorities. The first time that I tried to call back home, my parents kept saying, just make sure you don't say salam alaikum. For Uyghurs in China, speaking their native language is incredibly risky. But on the other side of the world, just past these doors behind me, Uyghur Americans are working to make sure that their language is preserved for the next generation. I really wanted to give a sense of identity to the Uyghur kids that are also growing up in the diaspora. That's why Kashgari co-founded Anna Karen Education, a Uyghur language school. Anna mini aideidu aideidu. Anna mini aideidu. Every Sunday, children and teenagers gather to practice speaking, writing, dancing, and more. My favorite part about coming here is that I could like communicate with my other friends. They're really nice, they treat me, like whenever I'm sad, they come up. But for all of the fun students have at Anna Karen Education, the human rights violations in the Uyghur region can still loom over classes. How much do the kids know about the situation? Are they coming to you with questions? The older kids, they're engaged. They know what's happening. The little kids, I think sometimes they do uh, understand it. You hear comments that normally you would never hear from a five-year-old or a six-year-old. What sorts of comments are you hearing from those kids? Things like, you know, I don't know where my grandma is. Do you know where your grandma is? It's things that, you know, they say it in such a kiddish, childish manner, or like, you know, I can't go back. Now, students at Anna Karen Education immerse themselves in a culture that is oppressed in China, while teachers like Kashgari push for a better world. No matter what horrific things are happening back home, this is the future we want to be able to have. Megan Leibowitz, Fairfax. Tonight, I'm here at Nashua Community College where supporters of Mayor Pete Buttigieg piled into the gym to watch results roll in. The big question for tonight, how much will the mayor from South Bend resonate with voters from New Hampshire? Thank you! Tonight, Senator Bernie Sanders led New Hampshire with less than a 2% lead over Pete Buttigieg. Election after election has shown us that putting forward a new perspective is how Democrats win the White House, and we will win the White House. After Sanders and Buttigieg, Klobuchar made a jump to third place, and Warren and Biden ended in fourth and fifth, respectively. I believe that Pete will win! 
Biden left for South Carolina before the polls even closed in New Hampshire. But here at the primary night party for former mayor of South Bend, Pete Buttigieg, supporters are optimistic about his future. People come from all over the country to support him canvassing. As candidates look toward the next caucuses and primaries, jury's still out as to what extent voters may realign support behind frontrunner Democrats. I actually went into this one uh, following my support for Bernie from 2016. I've slowly moved over to Pete. The next stop for Democratic candidates is Nevada. Reporting from Nashua, New Hampshire, Megan Leibowitz, Medill News Service. Cars honking and dancing in the streets. These are the scenes of celebration in Evanston after Joe Biden was declared the next president of the United States. So proud of this country. But as crowds gather, COVID cases are still surging. And that's not the only health challenge that the now president-elect will have to face. Joe Biden played a key role in developing the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. I voted for it proudly and believe it's one of the best votes ever cast. Only one week after the election and about two weeks after Justice Amy Coney Barrett's Supreme Court nomination, the highest court heard oral arguments for a case that has the potential to change everything. So let's break down what this case is and why it matters. First, I'm going to need to take us back to 2012. That's when the Supreme Court upheld the ACA by saying the price you'd pay if you did not buy health insurance, otherwise known as the individual mandate penalty, was a tax. Let's fast forward to 2017. Congress was controlled by Republicans, and Republicans decided to cut the individual mandate penalty down to zero. It entails that the Internal Revenue Service is absolutely forbidden to collect zero dollars from taxpayers who go without insurance. They get to keep their zero dollars. Has this gotten silly yet? And that's where this case comes in. California v. Texas hinges on whether the Affordable Care Act is still constitutional after the individual mandate penalty was cut. And if the individual mandate penalty is not constitutional, does the entire ACA need to fall? But Republicans have long been against the ACA. The disaster is Obamacare. And that's where this election comes in. Democrats will have control over the House and executive branch, which may give them some leverage in altering the ACA if the Supreme Court decides that changes have to be made. Depending on A, do they break it, and B, on what basis do they break it, we're going to have to craft legislation that fixes what they broke. But runoff elections will decide which party takes control of the Senate. No matter what happens with the Senate, the highest court probably won't announce their decision on the ACA until next spring or summer. In the meantime, stay tuned to those Senate runoff races for clues about what the future of healthcare might look like.